Hey, what's up guys? My name is Charlie. Today we're going to be watching some Nostalgia Critic, and it's going to be Godzilla from 1998. Oh god, I remember watching this on VHS, I believe. Um, I mean, it was good. I enjoyed it very much. But it was a very long time ago. I believe about 10 years ago since I watched this. So my mind is very foggy. And considering there's so many Godzilla movies these days, um, you know, it's hard to, hard to concentrate which one you remember all the scenes jumbling together. Uh, but yeah, it was 10 years ago since I watched this. It was a very long time ago, uh, so uh, my mind's a little bit foggy. But hopefully uh, the Nostalgia Critic shows some of the scenes and um, we uh, go back to memory lane. Because uh, it's going to be very interesting to go back 10 years uh, when I was sort of, you know, a little bit uh, younger. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's check out the video, shall we? Let's go. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Remember in 1994 when Stargate came out? For those yeah. who don't, the buildup was incredible. Mm. All it showed was this magical gate that could teleport people to somewhere else. Where Kurt did they Russell go? or something did they like find that. They got was there? In it. You had to go see the movie to find out. Wow, I wonder what it could be. Mm. God, this is gonna keep me awake all night. I, I'm gonna see the movie right now just to find out. <laughs> Holy crap, was that stupid! What? So what? Aliens invented the pyramids? It was good. Are you nuts? Yeah. All those Egyptian morons with their brilliant groundbreaking designs, they had nothing to do with it. It was just aliens. And the ruler of the known universe is that chick with the dick from the <laughs> crying game? Blow me! It's the last time I ever watch a movie by these jokers again. Say, you remember in 1996 when Independence Day came out? It was done by the same idiots who did Stargate, but look, all it showed in the advertising was the White House getting blown up. That's <laughs> it. Nothing else. Whoa, how the hell does that happen? This movie must be good! <laughs> I mean, sure they messed up with Stargate, but maybe this will be a good one. Besides, I thought Stargate I was good. I the White House blows up. Stargate was awesome. Right Independence. Son Day. of a bitch! This movie's even worse than the last one! So what? <laughs> the President of the United States gets in a jet to fight off aliens? Are you <laughs> high? Yeah, that's it. I'm done. I am never watching another movie by these morons ever again. Wow. They were good ever. movies. <laughs> No, no, not interested. No. I, I got a fight. <laughs> no, 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 I don't care. I don't care. Oh my god. <laughs> god damn it! Curse my hunger for wanton destruction! Alright, so even though the filmmakers made two horrible movies before, Godzilla hooked us all in with its clever advertising. How? Because they never showed the monster. Yeah. You had to see the movie in order to see the monster. <laughs> so advertisers thought up the brilliant strategy of describing the monster for us. Like vehicles that said his foot is as long as this bus. Or billboards that said his head is as big as this sign. It was downright genius. <laughs> Alright guys, so you suckered us in yet again. Mm. But please, please, can you try and give us a good movie this time? I mean... <laughs> It's Godzilla! It can't be that difficult to make something that's just so unentertaining. Oh, you shit knockers! You did it! You actually did it! You made Godzilla even less credible than it already was! Somebody give these douchebags an award for sucking! Wow. Ass! The free movies you're so saying. So if I have to through this pile of dino droppings, I figure you ought to share the pain with me. <laughs> the film starts out with, oddly enough, a monster attacking the Japanese. Haven't seen that before. After that scene, we get our next horrible disaster, Matthew Broderick. He plays our main character called Nico Titopoulos. It's Titopoulos. Whatever. He plays as a nerdy white guy who wears glasses and is socially... Isn't he from Ferris Bueller's Gee, Day Off? that sounds like the nerdy white guy who wears glasses and is socially awkward from Stargate. Or the nerdy <laughs> white guy who wears glasses and is socially <laughs> awkward from Independence Day. But don't you worry, this character is far, far different. He is much more annoying than any of those other guys. So the job of Mr. Metropolis, Cetopolis, whatever, is to study earthworms and how they grow over a certain period of time. This leads to him getting the clever nickname of the Worm Guy. The Matthew Broderick plays a wormy person? Finally, some ideal casting! 
<laughs> so the military comes to take him to a piece of land in Panama, where they want him to analyze something a little bigger than an earthworm. Here's your sample. Study it. What sample? You're standing in it. Damn. <laughs> they want him to analyze the footprint of a giant chicken? <laughs> killer poultry is not on his list of study specimens. Good old testosterone. Cetopolis. Whatever. Agrees to study whatever made that hole in the ground. Meanwhile, in Tahiti, the French guy from The Professional interviews one of the survivors of the monstrous shipwreck. Oh, God. Whoa, <laughs> a lighter. I've seen giant radioactive lizards the size of the kingdom, but a lighter? That gets my attention. <laughs> what did you see, old man? Okay, apparently mm. fire translates English into Japanese, but I digress. What did you see, old man? How did he know his Gojira. name? Gojira. This seems threatening at first, but take a look at what Godzilla actually translates out to. Gojira. <laughs> nice lighter. <laughs> Gojira. Next we cut to New York City, where a woman named Audrey wants to try and get a reporting job from an anchor she's working for, played yeah. by Harry Shear. He's gonna consider me for the job? What else did he say? Why don't we talk about it over dinner tonight? Your place. Oh my god, sexual Mr. harassment, Kyle Jesus. Yes, and very beautiful. Have I ever told you that before? Wow, subtle. Do you think he tries that on every woman he meets? Mm. Hi, I'm Charles. My hobbies are marriage, cheating, and having sexual intercourse with you. You yeah. want to have dinner? And then we cut you to get another for that, location in Jamaica. Age. Jesus, how many locations are there? It's like they're kicked out of every country that they try to <laughs> film in. Where it turns out that Bowser is still on the loose. As it turns out, he attacked yet another ship. And much like this movie, it was dragged under. So what could this giant perversion of nature possibly be? This animal is much too big to be some kind of lost dinosaur. A hybrid caused by the fallout on these islands. Uh-huh. Mm. Like your earthworms? <laughs> yes, yes. I believe that this is a mutated aberration. Just like my career. <laughs> I'm acting. Next we cut to Audrey's friends, played by a very annoying Vicky Lewis and an even more annoying Hank Azaria. I'm telling you. He is dirt. He's a douchebag, gutter slime, dog crap, puke chunks. Hey, hey, I'm eating. You don't see I'm eating? Come on, I'm trying to be old New York here. But <laughs> bing, boom, bam, and jets and stuff. She's suddenly distracted when she sees Mr. Tapdancilus. Cetopolis. Whatever. On the TV screen. <laughs> While that's going on, we see the mayor of New York and his aide appeasing the city. Tell me if these two look familiar at all. Mary Birch! Thank you! Oh, they're spoofing Siskel and Ebert, I see. Apparently Mayor Ebert is an anger-obsessed screamer who spends most of his time eating candy, while his aide Jean is a slimy little yes-man who blindly agrees with everything he says. Take that, Siskel and Ebert! How dare you have an opinion! But I don't get it. Why are they making fun of these two in the first place? They're like America's most loved critics. Oh, maybe it's because they never gave thumbs up to any of your movies. Well, maybe if you got your thumbs out of your asses and start producing good films, we'd agree with you. But wow. dude, they don't even take advantage of this. Even Gene Siskel, the critic they were satirizing, asked the question, if you're going to go to the trouble of putting us in a monster movie, why don't you at least take advantage of having the monster either eat or squash us? Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Here's your shot to really get back at these critics who hated all your films, in a monster movie, no less, and you don't even have the monster kill them or rip them to shreds? Mm. That's really bad when you're getting criticized by the critic you're criticizing because you didn't criticize them enough. <laughs> yeah. Try saying that three times fast. Mm. But the director is not the only one preying on the innocent. Godzilla finally arrives, showing his face in New York and running a prehistoric muck. Look out! It's Cloverfield! That's eight years early! So he romps and stomps and even goes past a news station where voice actress Nancy Cartwright sees him walk by. I think your story just walked by the window. Okay, wait a minute. Nancy Cartwright, Harry Shear, Hank Azaria, is this just a Simpsons reunion? What's <laughs> oh next? God. The cast of Scooby-Doo is gonna show up? Like Zoing Scoob, look out! It's Godzilla! <laughs> Holy shit! Like you said it, Scoob. So he roars and screams and tears up good chunks of the city, and then out of nowhere, he suddenly disappears. Where did he go? After its initial at attack, he uh, disappeared. He suddenly disappears? He How went he in the water? How do you lose track of a 20-story high dinosaur? 
It's perfect. An island, water on all sides, but like no other island in the world, this is a place where he can easily hide. Underwater? A city of 8 million people <laughs> is a good place to hide? <laughs> this isn't like the Born Identity where he can just blend into his surroundings. My guess is that giant prehistoric lizard is probably gonna stand out. So mm. they look over the damage that the amazing disappearing Godzilla left behind. In what city officials are describing as the worst Maybe on the ground, the, the train trade center station? Uh, yeah, the uh, World Trade Center bombing. I'm sure that's the only huge disaster that New York will ever... Um... Alright, I'm bailing out on this one. <laughs> we see yeah. that Godzilla has left Good a idea. long line of destruction. Even caved his way through the MetLife building. Ha huh, wow. that's funny. But wait, really look at this. How is it possible that that thing is still standing? Mm. New York architecture isn't just one of those big paper things that you rip through at the beginning of a football game. <laughs> it's a little more complicated than that. So while the city is being evacuated, our heroes try to think of a way to lure the monster out so they can get a good shot at it. They then come up with a brilliant idea. Fish! Of course! Giant piles of fish. Because as we all know, lizards do not eat fish! They eat <laughs> bugs! What are you, crazy? You'd be better off putting a giant ant farm in the middle of the city, you retards! So our brilliant and obviously unlizard prone hero looks over this amazing sight. That's a lot of fish. What? That's a lot of fish. Huh. Okay. That's a bit That's cheesy. a lot of fish. That's <laughs> a lot of... I don't get it. No, do I. That's a lot of fish. That's a lot so? of fish. So... I mean, is that meant to be funny? Mm. I love to pause at the end for the audience to laugh. I mean, but what's the joke? Yeah. I could have just as easily said, that's a hat. That's a wall. Yeah. That's a lot that's... of fish. I mean, how is that funny? Mm. You could have said a lot of things there, like, I got a fishy feeling about this. Yeah, or, it's, it's like shooting fish in a barrel out here. I, I mean, it wouldn't have been funny, but at least they would have been actual jokes. Yeah. That's a lot of fish. You could spend years <laughs> trying to figure out why the hell that's supposed to be funny and not get anywhere. Mm. That's a lot of fish. Look, you could literally just put in gibberish. And that at least would have been a little bit funnier. He looks over this amazing sight, turns to the other guy and says, Poppity pop pop pop. Come and on. that actually will have gotten a little bit of a laugh. Just nonsense off the top of my head is funnier than these guys trying to willingly produce written humor. Thank! So, after Mr. Tim Manopolis, Cetopolis, whatever, makes his brilliant remark, guess who comes to dinner? <laughs> wow, I guess Bugs Bunny has lost again. <laughs> I knew I should have taken that left toilet of Albuquerque. No, it's the poorly computer-generated Godzilla in all his unconvincing pixelization. <laughs> Why are you taking Did you get my good side? Please say he eats Broderick. <laughs> no, not today. Apparently someone also forgot to tell Godzilla that lizards don't eat fish because he takes the bait literally hook, line, and sinker. But the military attack, which means, of course, more stomping and running around the city. Why not tranquilize it? Kill him, John Adams. Do our country proud! Woe to the Union! I was so pitifully embarrassed. <laughs> Look, he's even breathing fire, just like a real lizard would do. Look at this scene, it's practically ripping off every single flying scene ever done in motion picture history. Echo 4 R. Use the force, Luke. Locked on, sir. Unit 1 to Unit 7, give me a situation report. Oh <laughs> my god. Around. The heat seekers can't lock. Stay on target. But it turns out the military really sucks at their job because yeah. they actually turn out to destroy more of the city than the monster does. Yeah. Seriously, I don't get how they can't shoot this thing. I mean, is he really that hard to miss? I especially love this scene where the monster actually manages to fake them out. Dude, this isn't a game of tag. Just use any of your basic five senses to find him. <laughs> After he starts dry humping a building, Godzilla manages to, and I'm not kidding, Disappear again. How? What is wrong with these idiots? Are they just looking at their shoelaces when he's around? I mean, <laughs> we did nothing to him. Oh, that's not true. We fed him. 
Ah, 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 several good soldiers just lost their lives. Oh, God. Dick. Yeah. So after that, we see Audrey. As she comes across Mr. Takanov and Humpashire, Ricky Dicky, Hamster Master, Polly Wally, Wanna Bing Bangy, Super Califragilistic, Knick Knack, Patty Wacky, Give the Dog a Banana Pan, a Full Fresca, Hickory Dickory, Hockety Pockety Wacky, Wack Angelina Francesca the Third. Damn. Whatever. As they decide to catch up on old times. You're still mad at me? Well, you left without a phone call, a letter, nothing. All you this barely time. know each other. Yeah. Right? I guess I am still a little mad. That was eight years ago. Oh. Some people change. Most people don't. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, but uh, you are aware that there was just a giant radioactive monster roaming through the city, <laughs> right? Eight years is a long time. I love how everyone else is calm in the background. Look, just sort of chilled out, <laughs> got around their normal business. By the way, did you see all that fish? There was a lot of it. She <laughs> stares over as apparently her ex-boyfriend keeps a lot of pictures of her lying around. Most women creepy. would find this creepy, but the script's yeah. out-of-touch reality suggests that she finds it charming. So charming that she steals a videotape of top-secret information from him so she can post it all over the news. No. Wow, what a whore. Meanwhile, as helicopters continue to search for plot, Broderick comes across a stunning realization. Godzilla is pregnant? But how can that be? Males can't lay eggs. Not if he reproduces asexually. Wow, how dramatically convenient. <laughs> the blood that I collected revealed that the creature is either about to lay eggs or already has. Gentlemen, we could have sequels. Horrible, horrible sequels. <laughs> These eggs are Too late for that. <laughs> how could you possibly know that? The fish, the fish that we found on the subway. He's not collecting all his food just for himself. And I don't think I need to remind you, gentlemen, that that was, in fact, a lot of fish. <laughs> but the army doesn't listen to Broderick's pleas as they discover that he accidentally leaked information to the news and is booted off the assignment. Audrey tries to apologize for being a bitch. It was a terrible thing to do. I never should have done that. Good luck with your new career. What's with the dramatic music? What it takes. I thought we had Who something. Cares? I thought we had fish! Mm. But Jean Renault pops up as it turns out that he's part of a secret French organization as they set out to stop Godzilla because they care about the Americans. Can you believe us to expect such a thing? I mean, not the giant radioactive lizard, the French trying to help Americans. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> because the fish plan worked so well the first time, the military plans to do it again! Only this time they're luring the monster out into Central Park. Because as yeah. we all know, no one can survive Central Park in the middle of the night. Godzilla comes out for the 11th rainy day in a row and again falls for the bait. Alright, I'm just going for the fish. We cool? We cool? Oh, you cocktease! With some more explosions and obnoxious kabooms, Godzilla runs through the city yet again. I'm starting to think you don't like me very much. <laughs> there we go. Into the board. Oh good! He jumped into the Hudson River! He'll be dead in a matter of seconds! But the Green October is standing by to zap this rapscallion back to Kingdom Come. Direct hit! Yeah! <laughs> I just wanted to be on Broadway! <laughs> You'd think that'd be the end, but nope! Our heroes drive into the demolished subway to find the nest of eggs that Broderick was talking about. But wait! How are the French gonna pass by as Americans? Who you boys with? Uh, we're with the 3-2, sir. I didn't ask you, soldier. You got a problem talking? Well, no, sir, I'm fine. All right. Keep it moving. I'll oh, thank you very much. What the fuck? Elvis Presley movies. Elvis Presley. What's the game? Eh, could be worse. He could have done his Jerry Lewis impression. Mm. I just wanted to ride on the underground choo-choo with the wheels and the sparks and the lady! So they come across a destroyed Madison Square Garden where they make their discovery. Quiet. I think I hear fish. Faster than you can say green eggs and ham, fish our jokes. heroes come across a nest of Cadbury eggs from hell. But the eggs Alien. start to hatch, and rather than just shoot the damn things, the French do what they're best known for. Give up and scram. <laughs> and this is the part of the movie I like to call, guess what part of Jurassic Park they're stealing from? Oh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it seems that behind every door there seems to be a blockade of monsters. Brother should know, he checks all of them. Ah! 
Once again, the mystical gumballs of doom seem to give the monsters the slip, as they get out of the building just before the military blows it to smithereens. So this should be the end of the movie, right? Mm. No, because Godzilla actually resurrects himself back to life. Truly, he is the son of Godzilla. So this leads to yet another chase scene where our heroes race across the city in a taxi. Come on. Turn the meter off! Turn the meter off! <laughs> you know, they outwit this thing just a few too many times. He breathes fire at them, they just turn around. He corners them in a tunnel, they just turn on their headlights. They get trapped inside his mouth. Hey, got a quarter? <laughs> I know this is probably a bad time to mention this, but... Do you guys remember all that fish? Wasn't that something? So he gets tangled up in the Brooklyn Bridge as the military throw everything they got. Direct hit, but the target is still moving, sir. Well, circle around and fire again! Just blow shit up! It's all we know how to do! <laughs> Sheesh, what the hell else can they throw at the damn thing? Use the anvil! Use the ocean liner! That's it! Ring in the sink, boys! After the creature finally goes down, we uh, get that finally. lame scene where I guess you're supposed to actually feel sorry for it. I've had more emotions for my toilet brush. <laughs> what have we become? Eh, I guess we'll never find out. Hooray! <laughs> so Audrey and Tatitis get together, Jean gives Ebert a vulgar thumbs down, and even our French friend manages to say au revoir. Thank you for your help, my friend. Maybe one day I too can be fascinated by fish. <laughs> and they all live happily ever after. Or do they? Oh god. I don't think so. In my world, this movie is over. Why? Because this movie bombed big time. Finally bringing down that reign of special effects disaster movies that were in and of themselves disaster movies. True, the same director tried to lure us back with shitty movies like The Day After Tomorrow and 10,000 BC. But audiences are finally learning their lesson about avoiding this group's crap. And if by chance you think that their latest disaster movie 2012 might finally be oh, that God, one good disaster that. film you think they might make, <laughs> just remember... <laughs> God, I love that cartoon. I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember, so you don't have to. That's a lot of fish. Oh, for God's sake, enough with the fucking fish jokes. How many fish puns is this guy gonna make? <laughs> uh, how many times is he gonna keep saying about the bloody fish? Thankfully, the video's over, so we don't have to keep going on about the fucking fish. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was, uh, good. Um, I saw it like, uh, I mean, it was a long time since I've seen it, but I gotta say, the movies like Independence Day and Godzilla and all the other stuff they made, I didn't think it was bad. You know, it was good at the time. I enjoyed it. Um, and that's the, uh, I feel bad because I disagree with the Nostalgia Critic. These are not bad movies. Um, I mean, it all depends. It's different for everyone, you know? Everyone has a different uh, perspective, sort of opinion on movies. It's different for everybody, you know? Some people like the movies, some people don't. You know, it could be a really good movie. Um, a really good movie. And some people can hate it. Um, it's, uh, it's just... Everyone's different. Everyone likes something different. Every category, you know, there's different categories, you know, different departments, and uh, this is not for everyone. Um, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of Godzilla movies. I'm pretty sure. Wasn't there like a Godzilla Resurrection? Or am I thinking of Alien Resurrection? I don't know. But I'm pretty sure there was other Godzilla ones. I can't remember what they're titled. But I remember. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's other Godzilla movies. Um, and um, there wasn't as good. Um, I hear. Uh, but uh, yeah. I don't know. This was a long time ago. I saw this. And seeing it now. Seeing it today. Um, seeing the clips. Yeah, this is not what I remember as a child. It was, it well, you know, I mean, <laughs> I had something much more better in my head. Um, I had good memories of this uh, movie. 
Uh, it's, it 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 doesn't make sense. Yeah, it, it's silly at some parts. Um, uh, I di I didn't realize how silly it was. You know, when you as you watch something as a kid, a movie, it it's not as bad as when you watch it again as an adult. You know, it changes. Uh, your childhood memories uh, sort of get violated. They're destroyed. They're turned into dust, uh, dust in the wind, so to speak. Because you know, yeah, uh, it's not what you expected. You know, you thought it was a good movie at the time, but I still think this is a good movie. I'm um, sorry, but uh, yeah, that guy was out of uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, I believe. Um, I don't know what his name is, uh, his um, the actor's name, but he, I'm pretty sure he was from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and. Um, uh, what else? Uh, I believe that he also played Sherlock Holmes or something like that. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure he played something like Sherlock Holmes. I can't remember. Uh, also, there was another actor, that guy. He was from, uh, Pink Panther. And he was from The Professional, uh, Leon or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, but he was from that movie. That was one of the most popular movies I think he's done, uh, instead of The Pink Panther, um, um, uh, that, uh, what was that, Leon the Professional or something like that, I can't remember the movie, I think that's why it was called The Professional, when he takes care of the plant, um, you know, when he was, uh, Peace Lily or whatever it is, uh, and he, uh, he's a hitman, and he looks after a girl, uh, it's been a very long time since I've watched that as well, but that was a good movie, um, that was a very, uh, good movie, because I remember one of the scenes, one of my favourite scenes, um, scenes from the movie is when it's like, who should we send? And he's like, everyone. <laughs> it was a absolute overreaction. And it was absolutely great. Um, but uh, yeah. But we're talking about other movies now. Let's uh, end the video here. Uh, so yeah, if you like this video, make sure to give a like. Comment down below. Make sure to uh, subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>